Hi, I'm George Thompson and I was one of the first first year pupils at uh, Firhill School. The, uh, there were other people in the school but we were the first intake of first year people. I remember when I arrived at the school, the school seemed huge, absolutely enormous when we were leaving our primary, my primary school at Craig Lockhart. The, uh, I can't remember really just how many people were there but it just seemed enormous and there were, there were kids obviously from all different areas and it, it was just amazing to be in a place with so many different people. Um, one of the other things I can remember is really that when we were there it was just when the library was first set up and helping occasionally the library teacher to catalogue some of the books that were in the school. The, the school was divided in that, at that time into, into blocks and of course that we had to move from block to block to go to classes um, and this was always a good excuse to, um, to, to, de to delay the time moving between these blocks. The, uh, one, I'm trying to think of other things that um, perhaps one of, the, one of the other memories I have of the school is that everything was new. The building was new, the classrooms were new. In fact, the only thing that I can think of that probably wasn't new is I remember being at the, in the metalwork class and the, uh, the, 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 the files were useless. You could file, the files were, were absolutely hopeless. You could rub and rub away at pieces of metal and nothing ever seemed to happen. And I turned out to be a plumber, so I know how, how to use a file. The, uh, they also also remember the bike sheds and probably enough that, that that I probably shouldn't say any more about the bike sheds because that's where that's where we used to go to have the odd the odd cigarette. Um, one of the things I kind of remember is that when when I went to school, of course, the school with the school being new, there was no facilities round about it. There was no kind of tuck shop or, or machines in the school serving drinks and that sort of thing. And where the Esso garage was, now being built as retirement flats, there used to be a small car park there and a van, um, like a kind of ice cream van, and the old chap that was in the van would sell um, would, would sell sweeties and what have you at lunchtime. And um, I, I remember there was always a big melee at the back of the van to try and get to the, the front of the queue and the poor old chap one day had forgot to put his handbrake on and the pressure of the 20 or 30 kids at the back door of the van had slowly pushed the van across the car park until until of course we were, we didn't care we were at the back trying to get our you know trying to get our sweeties and the van eventually bumped against the fence at the far end of the car park the one thing about that old chap he was he was very good because um, I remember at one of the sports days he supplied an ice cream for every single person in the school so that if it was a sports day there was a huge box of ice cream and he would give you just a small square of ice cream and everybody got one we also, um, at school, of course, if we were bad in these days, there was the Taws, the Loch Gelly, the belt. Um, I did see that on more than one occasion, I've got to say. Um, and it was, it, was, uh, it was a fairly regular occurrence for some people. The, uh, and, of course, you, could get, you would get the belt then for doing some, some really criminal things like, like talking in the lines. Um, so we used to line you up to go into school and you have to walk into the school these days two by two. And if you spoke... That was a, that was a belting offence. I, I think things have moved on from then, and jolly good that that is too. The, uh, the, the there was there was many things that uh, that, that the slightest demeanour would you would end up getting the belt. And of course, the thing was is that um, as you kind of got past first year, the boys at least the idea was that when you did have to take the belt was not to flinch, not to show a tear, and that was quite difficult at times, as I remember. The uh, and of course, some teachers were more famed for giving the belt than others, and I'll I'll refrain from maybe mentioning any of their names, um, although I do remember. But but that would be nasty. Um, the, uh, the 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 one or two teachers that that kind of that I do kind of remember were a very good science teacher, um, and you know just just as it happens, I can't I really can't remember the name of the science teacher. But the the music teacher, I've Miss Cameron, as I recollect that uh, she could teach none of her class to sing, none of us, but I remember one day she kind of gave up in horror and played a piece of classical music. music. It was uh, Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries and um, that was the first time I took an interest because somebody actually told me what was going on, what the music was about and and that's lasted for a long time, you know, when you hear about the classical music now and you understand what it's about, um, you, it really does help to, to think what the what the the piece is about, and 
as I say, from none of our class could sing, none of us would really seem to be musical at all. But but that one afternoon, with an explanation of the Ride of the Valkyries and the New World Symphony, what was actually happening in the music, that was a great experience. Uh, that, that, that Most of the other classes I kind of drifted through. Um, and I think our class was a bit the same, that the school, the school didn't uh, at that time kind of drive anybody forward, or at least not, not in the lower echelons anyway. Um, I remember when I was at school that uh, we used to do, used to do sport gym, and really that gym was never my forte. I've always been fairly fit ever after school, certainly, but but gym was never my forte. I remember uh, I remember them trying to teach us to play cricket, and um, that having hit the ball once and felt the, the the vibration coming up through the bat, that it was just so sore in your fingers that when the next time I saw this ball getting hurtled towards me by one of the really good guys that, at cricket. I mean, it seemed to become a huge speed. I tossed the bat away and, and, and left it. That was the end of my cricket career. I enjoyed tennis for a little while when I was at school. Rugby was far too rough for me, but I really enjoyed the tennis. And they said that uh, you know, I was very good and they would phone me. I'm still waiting for that call yet to join the Firhill School tennis team. Maybe it'll come for the, you know, for the pensioners, tennis, Firhill ten, Pensioners Brigade. And the, that leading on from the sport, that my children actually went to Firhill, both of them, and they seemed to have a great time. It was a very positive experience for them. And the sport at Firhill seemed to have changed a bit as well. That um, I got involved with uh, with my children um, skiing at school. Uh, both of them learned to ski, and I think it was either Mr or Mrs Bates that used to take the school the school skiing team. And I went up north with them, with them a couple of times just to help out, to be an additional adult. Uh, with the skiing, and that's that was a great value to to the school. Hill End being close by, I hope they don't decide to close that down. But Hill End being close by, the kids were able to learn to ski there, and it's become a great thing for our family. We've skied in many places across Europe since the school, and it was this, it was Mr or Mrs Bates, I can't remember which one, that really was the key to that. And they seemed to have a great time at school, it was an enjoyable experience for them. Um, none of the, neither of them I would suggest were particularly high flyers, but they came away with a good rounded education. I wonder if I did.